Okay, so welcome back. We are going to continue with the new topic, which is derivatives. This topic is going to take us, I think, three classes. Um, we are going to learn how to use derivatives and we're going to practice a lot with future forwards options. So we're going to, to, to learn quite a few things about derivatives. And today, uh, this first video is going to be quite short because it's kind of the introduction to derivatives. So let's begin with that. This is presentation number six. You have it in Blackboard as all of the presentations. So first, the name derivative is called like that because the, the value of the derivative, which is physically a contract, only a contract where people specify some things that they will do in the future. And the value of that contract is based on the value of another asset. So that's why it's called derivative because its value derives from the value of the other asset. It means that the paper itself is not worth anything, but whatever the price or the value of the asset that is inside of that contract, um, it, it's attached to the value of that, of that paper. So um, that's why it's called derivative. Then uh, derivatives, were born because in the 50s, 60s, uh, a lot of people were worried because uh, some assets changed their price suddenly. That means like for, ex for example, maybe core uh, changes price a lot from one year to the next. So maybe, I don't know, like food producers or, 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 or manufacturers who needed corn for whatever they needed. Uh, they suffer because of these changes in price and also producers of corn because maybe one year it was expensive and then in the next year it was cheaper. So they came up with an idea of signing a contract between the seller of corn and the, and the buyer of corn. And in that contract, they will stipulate the price and they will say, we don't know what will happen in the future, but we can sign right now a contract where I force myself to sell you something and you force yourself to buy me that thing at a certain price. So that's how derivatives were born. So if you think about the purpose of the derivative at that moment, it was to hedge. That means to eliminate or reduce the risk, right? Because they had a risk of getting the price higher or lower. So they decided to sign the contract to hedge the risk, to reduce the risk. So derivatives were born because of that. But as derivatives became more and more popular, people realized that another uh, objective or another way to use derivatives was to speculate. Do you remember speculation means that you will bet on something. Speculate is the same as betting or gambling. It's like you think something will happen, so you take the risk and then you decide to speculate. So how can you speculate with a derivative? So let's go back to the same example with corn. Imagine that uh, someone has a paper saying that he's willing to sell, I don't know, uh, one ton of corn at $100. So that paper says that at a certain time in the future, that person will sell you a hand, uh, one ton of corn at $100. So if you think that the price of corn will increase, then what you can do is that maybe you can uh, maybe you can buy that contract or you, you can, if someone has that contract already, you can go and say, I will give you $10 for that contract. And then you get that contract. When the time comes, that person will sell you corn for $100. And then uh, in the end, you can sell the corn at a higher price if that is what happens, right? That's speculating. You think the price will be get higher. Uh, so then you can buy cheap corn and sell it a uh, more expensive price. So that's why uh, uh, derivatives became more and more popular. Why? Because people wanted to speculate with almost everything, with corn, with sugar, with oil, with gold, with currencies, with prices of assets, almost with everything. Because remember, derivatives can be made out of almost every asset in the world. So Right now, something that is quite uh, interesting is that from all the derivatives in the world that are being traded, 97% of them are made for speculation. That means that in the end, there is not really a person who needs the asset. It's only someone who wants to 
um, get profit from getting a cheaper or higher price of that asset. So a lot of people are buying derivatives of oil, derivatives of corn, derivatives of dollars, derivatives of everything, just because they want to make a profit. Right now, I think last two, two weeks ago, we had an issue with the price of oil, because something like this, there was an oversupply of oil, and so a lot of people producing oil and selling oil in part of derivatives, because a lot of people were selling oils in their derivatives. And because of this thing that the economy is really slow right now, no one is buying that, that, that much oil. So that's why there was a huge supply of oil and not too much demand of oil. That's why we have so low prices at some point, even negative prices, because it was more expensive to keep the price to, sorry, to keep the oil in, in, in like in a warehouse. So people will willing to pay someone to take the oil. It was something crazy that has never happened. We can talk about this later if you, if you like this, but it's just an example of how this part of speculation with derivatives is, is, is something that's from our day, day to day life. So um, in this class is something important. We are going to focus only on derivatives about foreign currencies because this is what we have been studying in this class. So we're going to uh, analyze uh, derivatives for dollars, for pesos, for euros, for yuan, like we have been doing all the class. And we are going to focus on uh, forwards, futures, which are quite similar. We're going to review that in a second. And options, we're going to also take a look at options. Uh, we are not going to see swaps in this course because remember this course is quite introductory, so it's not. Uh, if you like derivatives, you can take the derivatives course, but we are not going to calculate anything with swaps. So only forwards, futures, and options. So this was the introduction to the topic. In the next video, we're going to talk about forwards and futures, which is also kind of a review. And then in the third video, we're going to do an exercise.